Hi everybody. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. Um, I had a rough morning this morning. Nausea, throwing up. That happens to me. Uh, the nausea I get like every day almost. And the vomiting. Sometimes once a month, sometimes a couple times a week. I don't know. Right now, I have to really loud, high frequency, ringing in my head, and a really bad headache. I get these terrible fucking migraine headaches. They're like, ah. You know, it feels like somebody has an invisible cleaver in their hacking through your brain first one side and then it stops and goes to the other side uh, and then it stops and goes to the other side sometimes it feels like a pencil getting poked through my head invisible pencil um, very unpleasant I found that that only very strong pain medication helps and it's hard to get uh, you know I had all these doctors I had a neurologist I had a neuropsychiatrist I had a, a general physician I had a you know psychiatrist a therapist a social worker I had all these people in my life and then the big businessmen, the big Obamacare people, they decided, the New York, whoever decided that, uh, excuse me, that, um, it would be better, instead of allowing me to give my Medicaid card, thank the Lord I have Medicaid, to a doctor and let the doctor service me, they felt it would be better to put a large corporation between me and the doctors and force me into a managed care program that I didn't want. The managed care program they forced me into, of course, none of the doctors that I was seeing were in that, you know, they wouldn't, they didn't accept money from this company and most of the managed care companies, most of the doctors don't even want to work with Medicaid now because most of the managed care companies are so slow in paying they pay very little and it makes it a pain for the doctor to do anything because they have to call and approve every treatment that they give so it's like basically they've they turned off my health care I had gone through all this trouble for several years to put this team of doctors together in an attempt to save my life <laughs> and uh, treat, you know, my condition and also document this so that I could apply for disability because clearly I'm not going to work, you know, very well like this. And I've been fighting for disability now for four years or for three, four years, I don't know. Um, Patriot says that Around the time I applied for disability is when they really started hitting us with this hardcore wacky whack, but I didn't notice any pattern. I noticed they hit us as soon as I went over there. Uh, they were already targeting me in my life for many years, and I had no idea what it was. I just thought I had a curse on me, or, uh, you know, I didn't know what it was, man, really. <clears throat> anyway... My mind is, uh, I'm losing my memory, my short-term memory and short to long-term memory. Uh, I still have pretty good long-term memory, things from the past or whatever. Uh, they do this thing with me, it feels like uh, electronic memory disillusion where they seem to like throw this hook and hook onto a memory and pull it up and you recall it and that memory leads to the next memory however they're connected 
They don't have to be directly connected. It can just be, you know, an indirect connection. And then that pulls the next memory up. But when I look back, those memories seem to be gone. Or not as strong as they once were. And they're more difficult to recall. Just a theory. <clears throat> you know, um, I was exposed to Morgellons and other toxins through a concerted effort, um, a, a group, a technical group of uh, counterintelligence, you know, secret types occupied the hotel, the SRO building where we lived, unbeknownst to us, and had basically hooked up the entire place, but hooked up our room too, so that they could literally pump gas or vapor or material into our room through the floorboards, all around the floorboards and the walls. And they had all kinds of interesting devices and connections into our room and, you know, they put a speaker in the wall and they had cameras hidden and they had uh, wires to pull on things and move stuff around and stuff knocking in the wall and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And they also had other things going on, but regardless, you know, uh, we were bombarded with this vapor, this mist, this stinging, painful, sort of white mist in the room, and it turned into Morgellons, and those little black dots, the little black dots that everybody talks about. I mentioned this once before, but in the hotel where we lived, I used to sit on the fire escape, and I'm a very inquisitive, observant person, and I looked, and somebody had placed underneath the the lip of the building, under the fire escape by the windowsill, where the air would blow in, a package, a foil wrapped in tape, and I took it, and I unwrapped it, uh, I know, stupidly, not knowing that it was a biohazard biotoxin organism. Anyway, I unwrapped this thing and I, and I cut through all the layers of tape and, and foil and tape and foil and tape and foil and tape and foil and what was inside of this package was like dirt. It looked like dirt. I realize now that it wasn't dirt. It was those little black specks. It was millions of billions. You know, it was hundreds of millions of them. It was a, a several... <laughs> it, it was... You know, the size of a small book, this thing, it was a lot. And I threw it in the trash, and of course, that didn't make any difference because the people in this hotel took everything that we threw away in the trash out and held on to it, did stuff to it, whatever they, I don't know. But they would, you know, I would see the stuff later again in the trash months later. Um, but that thing disappeared, so... And... You know, we were heavily exposed to that stuff. I mean, a concentrated, you know, they would blow it into the room. Uh, we had fans going to blow. And we would change direction all the time because they would change direction how it would come in. Um, and then they were using this the beams on us. They had people in the building and across the street and wherever else focusing equipment uh, on us, uh, some kind of static generator thing that allowed them to literally move wires and metal objects and other stuff in the room as though they were there in the room with us. And this thing would make your hair stand up and it would go woo 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 and they would use it to move the walls. They literally moved the walls in our room back and forth. They moved them in a few inches so the whole place was compressed even smaller. And they shook the bed around and, you know, did all the exorcist stuff, trying to get us to think it was some kind of whatever. It was clearly technology, um, because it did explode one night, and this big klaxon went off, and I heard all these explosions, and the field collapsed, and I went, oh, and I had one night of rest. Um... But anyway, we were heavily exposed to this stuff. And not only that, um, you know, I 
I keep seeing weird stuff in my room. I don't even want to figure that out. What that is. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, never mind. Um, you know, there was a guy that had these tanks. Like, propane tanks. A little bigger. I chased him out of the building. Because somehow I was remote viewing and knowing where these people were and what they were doing. And I could see them in their rooms. And, of course, maybe this was all just part of their plan, their... You know, they had this guy down the hall, lived in a room, and he had a metal stuff on the door. And he was the guy with the computers that would control the, you know, the radio stations we would hear, and, and the feedback from what we would say, and sometimes they would feed it back into the room, it would echo, and all kinds of crazy things. But, uh, I was actually given, um, stupidly... I needed money, and I signed up for this medical research program where they were going to simply test to see if I had hepatitis C. And, uh, you know, I, I was going for several months, uh, and every three or six months or something, they would see you and test you and ask you about your behavior. And I was not engaged in any kind of risky behavior, no sexual proclivity, no intravenous drug use, no transfusions, no surgery, no, no reason to get hepatitis C. And I, you know, they told me you don't have it, and the next visit you don't have it, and the next visit you don't, and then the next visit you have hepatitis C. And I'm like, really? That sucks. Uh, and I, you know, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how I got this thing. Uh, you know, is it possible that, you know, who knows what's possible, but now I truly believe that these people <coughs> gave me something. And I think that I've been exposed to this stuff for many, many years because, you know, I always had these sores on my face and, and body, and even as a child, I had lumps on the backs of my arm, back of my arms and you know, some kind of keratin, keratosis, hyper keratin production or, you know, I, I don't know. Um, as a child, I used to get migraine headaches, terrible earaches all the time and canker sores all the time. Um, and the other weird stuff, they used to take me to the dentist a lot. And, you know, I had, uh, 27 teeth pulled out or something, 13 teeth once, and a lot of baby teeth, but, you know, they took out a lot of teeth, man. Uh, I used to have them all in a bag once, but these people would give me sodium pentothal. They would take me in the, the dentist and they would inject me with sodium pent. First they'd give me gas, then they'd inject me with sodium pentothal. I would be unconscious, and I would wake up however many hours later in their recovery room, and you know, it's just very strange, dental, you know, you don't need to, anyway, and I had some, some strange experiences and dreams, and uh, almost like hypnotically programmed behavioral responses to stimulus, I don't know, I think there's a part of me that knew that something really messed up was going on in my life, even though it was kept hidden uh, from me, and, and somehow I knew this and wanted to get away from it, you know, I don't know, it's a long story when you start connecting all the dots in your life and realizing that you really may have been part of some, something, you know, a larger overseen program that, that directed your life and made sure that you ended up 
in a certain place in a certain way, you know, made sure your skills were not utilized, made sure you never were able to succeed, you know. And I know to some people it sounds like a bunch of paranoid blah blah blah. Oh, I didn't make it in the world, it was so hard, so I have to blame everybody else, so you know. No man. For years I blamed it all on myself. I thought I was unworthy, useless, unlovable, you know, a failure, incapable. Uh, despite the evidence to the contrary, all the things I was capable of doing, all the things I had achieved, all the, you know, but the turnaround happened so radically in my life. I was running my own recording studio with a couple of partners. Uh, I had some connections to uh, big name rap artists and and uh, their producers. They seemed to like us and my studio and began to do work with us. And then, you know, everything, you know, I was living the dream. I was living my dream. I had worked really, really, really hard for many, many years to get to that point. And I was living what I wanted out of life, really, I thought. And then everything turned, and suddenly, you know, my girlfriend left me, my partners left me, uh, the money dried up, you know, the people stole everything. I got put out, I, I was, you know, bounced from place to place, I lost everything. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't hold it together. And believe me, I tried. More people came into my life and led me in poor, bad directions. I ended up doing stupid things and got went to jail. And and before I went to jail, they made sure they destroyed what I had left. I was still holding the studio together and working with this record company, but these people didn't seem to want to allow me to succeed. And they, you know, I had all these people in my life that were like my friends, and then suddenly clicked. And they all turned on me and treated me like I was garbage, you know, locked me out of my own space, you know, took all my stuff. It was really a nightmare. I put stuff in storage, somebody came and stole it all, and, you know, the next day it was gone. And these, these were not like just punks doing punk stuff. This was like professionally done, man. You realize now that all those coincidences in your life were like, a group of people or beings or whatever, you know, all working together in concert to screw up your existence. And you have to wonder why. What, what's so special about me? What could possibly be so special about me? You know? But then you realize that, wait a minute, you have all these gifts and talents and attitudes and behaviors and and, you know, this timeline, the trajectory, the trajectory of your life, you know, that you, and then the stumbling blocks, there's always the stumbling blocks from those people that want to hold on to every little thing they have because they're so afraid you're going to upset their apple cart business or whatever, you know, it's, I didn't know the world was such a nasty rotten place I was a you know I was uh, I mean I knew bad stuff happened but like why to me I'm no I, I, you know who am I threatening right but for whatever reason they wanted me to reduce me to you know and uh, the reason I'm telling this story is because it's making me feel a little better about how I actually feel now about what's really going on in my life. See? So, I'm um, avoiding the terror of facing reality and explaining it to you by talking about something else that happened that's also part of the whole story. and That's what happens when you and your brain is all messed up from uh, 
torture, microwaves, more gallons, and whatever else they did to us that hurt. Uh, this poor woman, this friend of mine, she texts me and she says she got this beam coming through the ceiling. It looks like a ribbon on a package. And it's very hot and it's following her all around and cooking her. I don't know what to tell her. Like, you know, get a camera so we can all see it. Get out of there. I don't know what to tell her. You know, these people, they cook us in our own homes. Um, anyway, this is enough talking for now. Thanks for watching. God bless you.